hello everyone uh, now we will continue with the transient heat flow so we must have observed that when we wear clothing or we touch any object we immediately feel either it it's cold or it's warm so that the warm cool sensation it's uh, it depends on the transient heat flow uh, behavior of heat from our uh, uh, body okay maybe it uh, we receive heat or it it uh, we may lose heat okay but this uh, warm cool feeling it comes for immediate transient heat uh, it it is a sensation of uh, within a fraction of second uh, that uh, uh, that's a, that's called uh, transient heat suppose we are we are touching uh, an object and immediately we may feel warm or cool but after certain time it may fades away so that's how it's called warm cool uh, sensation okay now our human body is uh, core temperature is kept uh, uh, it's a normally it's a 37 degree celsius and uh, when uh, the clothing we are wearing it's a normally it's a temperature is say less than the body uh, temperature or it's a skin temperature and it doesn't mean that we will feel cool of that it depends on the uh, various factors that uh, these things we will discuss and if it heat flows from uh, the uh, body to the uh, from skin to the clothing immediately then we will feel cool feeling so the temperature fall sensed by the thermoreceptor and higher the rate of the heat flow more rapid the temperature will drop and if the temperature drops rapidly then we will feel cool otherwise we may not feel cool if the temperature is actually it's a heat flow is at slower rate so the instantaneous heat flow rate it's basically it gives the warm or coolness. So, if the heat flow instantaneous heat flow is there then we we feel cool because the temperature of our skin goes down. So, the rate of change in temperature resulting from flow of uh, heat from skin to a clothing material at low temperature the clothing material has to be at low temperature otherwise we will receive heat when brought into contact with it is determined by the thermal inertia of the material. So, if the thermal inertia is low then we will not feel cool feeling. Okay. So, it uh, it is the material characteristics there are many other characteristics. So, the thermal inertia is the function of density of the material, specific heat of the material, thermal conductivity of the material. So, all these things if we if your thermal inertia is high then we will feel cool, if the temperature the, the materials temperature is uh, lower than the skin temperature if the thermal inertia is not high then we will not feel cooler like it is a thermal inertia is a function of density specific heat and thermal conductivity of a material which is not conductive in nature. So, we will not feel cool like uh, if we touch iron piece or one some insulated wood. So, that is why that we know that it is a we feel cooler feeling when we uh, touch iron because of the uh, it is a thermal in uh, thermal inertia which is related to the thermal conductivity. Similar uh, is the case of the clothing and we will see that uh, that various factors which actually affect the thermal inertia. So, the density 
specific heat and thermal conductivity of the material. So, any material that can absorb and conduct heat well is easily draw away the heat from the skin and we feel cooler. So, the higher the thermal inertia the cooler is the feel of touch. So, feel of touch is extremely important because that uh, that material may not be cool. So, the one um, we can see the two material one is the cool touch material if and another is the uh, warm touch material they are kept in the same environment they the effective temperature of these two materials are same, but the cool touch material gives the cool sensation the warm touch material gives warm sensation because of the thermal inertia. And this thermal inertia it is the it is a material characteristics that is a if the it is a textile material it is a fiber polymer characteristics like specific heat density thermal conductivity and uh, the fabric structure also in addition to this material uh, characteristics the polymer characteristics the structure of uh, material like structure of fabric particularly surface property of fabric have a great influence on cool, warm cool feeling. One uh, very classical example we can give suppose if we touch one uh, fabric made of uh, say uh, twill structure say uh, cotton uh, cloth uh, or twill cotton uh, fabric another fabric is made of cotton the cotton uh, satin fabric. So, if we touch the uh, both the fabrics we will feel the satin fabric gives better cool effect cool touch effect than the uh, twill and this is due to the fabric structural feature. So, fabric structure if the fabric structure is smooth. So, satin why satin gives a higher cool effect because satin has got high float uh, length. So, large number of uh, the areas uh, contact area with the skin is more that is why satin gives cool uh, touch and the on the other hand twill as uh, due to its uh, projected structure okay, that uh, it uh, the uh, contact area with the body it is uh, less. So, it does not actually uh, it is uh, draw heat from the our body at higher rate. So, uh, we can control the warm and cool touch of fabric by controlling the, the surface uh, surface structure of cloth. So, the bed sheet with our daily experience we can feel that a uh, uh, simple example of same uh, two bed sheets are made one is made of uh, the made from the same uh, yarn same say cotton yarn made of same uh, ends per inch peaks per inch but one uh, bed sheet is made of uh, say plain of a plain weave one by one plain weave another is made of say satin. So, we our experience says that it is a satin fabric uh, gives a higher cool uh, touch because of the higher contact area with the body and they can draw uh, that fabric can draw heat at a higher rate gives cool uh, feeling. So, let us see this is the curve where the x axis gives a contact time and y axis gives the skin temperature. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, the uh, fabric warm fabric uh, warm fabric this is a uh, warm fabric uh, brass fabric the smooth fabric and this one is cool fabric. Now, this two fabrics uh, the warm fabric means if we uh, the, the sensation of coolness is estimated by measure of initial rate of change in temperature. So, initial rate of change in temperature. So, this is the temperature say at 95 degree Fahrenheit and here it becomes out to uh, say 94.6 degree Fahrenheit. So, this rate of change initially it may be within say 2 seconds 1 or 2 seconds what is the rate of change in skin temperature it is a against skin temperature. So, that gives us the whatever whether the fabric will be cool or warm 
So, this is the for this is give uh, this is uh, the temperature does not change much ok skin temperature. So, this will give a warm feeling and whereas, this fabric for this fabric it is a cool fabric the temperature changes is very high. So, it gives warm feeling among these two the smooth fabric and uh, this is the smooth fabric and this one is the brushed fabric. They are made of the same material same structural uh, construction, but one is the normal smooth fabric another is the same fabric is brushed. So, what is the difference? So, here is, uh, one can see the smooth fabrics the temperature drop is skin temperature drop is higher than the brushed fabric because of the thin smooth fabric the contact area is high. So, maximum rate of heat flow occur within 0.2 seconds after an object is touched ok and warm or coolness is related to the subject surface property. So, that uh, if we change the surface warm and coolness is that changes. So, now the uh, question is that it uh, it takes away heat and the sensation of coolness is within 0.2 seconds 0.2 to 0.3 seconds, but what happens the if we uh, after that. So, after that it it is not that it will keep on uh, a it will keep on uh, drawing heat uh, because the environmental temperature is same. So, it cannot uh, draw the heat uh, draw heat it is um, at um, at that rate because it is a instantaneous heat chain. That means, a fabric which is cool in touch if we wear that fabric for certain time say for 5 minutes 10 minutes that cool sensation will go. So, that that uh, instantaneous cool sensation is within a uh, second ok and after that what will happen that same fabric may not be cool in touch, but if we keep moving our body is normally it is not in stationary condition. So, if when our body moves that means, that that but same fabric will keep uh, make different contact points keep changing the contact point. So, every new contact point it will give again the cool sensation. So, every when we keep on moving the it uh, new contact point is generated and old contact point earlier contact point is released. So, overall we will feel keep on feeling the cool sensation. So, now it is actually measured by maximum heat flux. So, which is observed shortly after the contact of the heated plate is correlated with the human skin. So, that any how to measure this now heat flux. So, heated plate is uh, kept. So, that heated plate is uh, the temperature of heated plate is uh, exactly kept in the around the 35 degree Celsius which is human skin temperature and when the fabric is touched with that and immediate instantaneous heat uh, flow heat absorbed by the fabric is measured by uh, the sensor. The instantaneous heat flow is measured. So, that is called the Q max. So, maximum heat flux is named as Q max. So, that is plotted against time. So, immediately the what is the maximum heat flux uh, it, it is a the heat is drawn uh, from the uh, plate uh, which is equivalent to skin that is measured. Q max is uh, taken as a measure of fabric thermal property in many instruments. So, Kawabata instruments which predicts the warm cool uh, feeling ok. And if we see this is the diagram where the quantity of heat transmitted from the plate heated plate with respect to time with reference to time is plotted. So, two fabrics are there this is fabric 1 and this is fabric 2. So, fabric 1 is actually it immediately it draws maximum heat very high. So, this value it is a Q max. 
So, what does it show? The this fabric which is actually summer clothing which is actually taking maximum heat immediately from the body. So, that is why for summer clothing we have to use a fabric which has got higher Q max value. Similarly, for winter if we use the same fabric we may feel uncomfortable. So, to keep us comfortable we have to use a fabric with higher lower Q max. So, transient heat flow should be as low as possible for warm clothing. So, so the we have seen that uh, how to design then. So, for if we see if we want to have a um, uh, fabric from same type of same yarn in that case we have to design a clothing for winter which, which will give us higher surface contact area. And if we have to design a clothing for winter we have to have lower surface contact area may that uh, you, you can reduce the lower surface contact area by brushing by uh, some other surface uh, treatment. Okay. Now, this is an experiment carried out with uh, different types of the fabrics made from different types of fiber and uh, at uh, Q max value has been measured at different level of moisture. Okay. This is the Q max value for a particular for different fabric. So, Q max it has been observed that Q max value increases with the increase in moisture level. So, what does it mean? A fabric if fabric has got higher moisture that means, it will draw heat at higher rate from the skin. So, at if it draws higher rate the heat at higher rate from the skin that means, we will feel cooler. So, uh, the Q max value increases with the increase in moisture content which means that the fabric feels cool at higher moisture content. So, we will uh, uh, feel cool at higher moisture content, but among the fiber if we see this is the linen, linen gives the linen uh, which results a higher Q max value that that is why linen is called cool fabric. So, because linen has got higher Q max on the other hand if we see the wool has got lower Q max value. So, wool that is why wool gives the warmth. So, the warmth due for wool is due to two reasons one is uh, uh, one is that wool has got the lower Q max value and also wool due to its specific morphological structure that is it is uh, basically it gives uh, some crimpy structure. So, its contact area is less. So, lower contact area gives the lower that warm touch. So, that is uh, we are not talking about here the thermal insulation here we are talking about the warm and cool touch. Okay. And another aspect of wool is that wool while absorbing moisture when ab it wool absorbs moisture it releases heat it is a exothermic absorption. So, that is uh, again uh, it is one of the reasons why wool is actually warm in even in the uh, humid condition it gives uh, uh, it releases heat. So, it is also clear that linen fabric has maximum Q max and wool has got minimum Q max up to certain level of moisture content. Okay. This is the reason why linen feels cool and wool feels warm when they are in there we, are, we are touch them okay. that is why this is mainly due to the uh, Q max value. So, higher correlation was observed between the physically measured Q max value and the fabric warm cool feeling by subjective assessment. Okay. There is a um, uh, good correlation has been observed with the Q max value. So, that is why 
Q max is the basically it is the indication of the warm cool feeling. A high Q max value corresponding to cool feeling and low Q max value warm feeling. The value of Q max depend on the fabric surface condition and not in the number of layers of fabric. So, if we even it is a single layer wool thin single layer wool fabric will keep warm touch than multi layer uh, linen fabric. It is a it is not the thermal transmission it is the it is a uh, instantaneous transmission ok. The value of Q max is sensitive to water content ok and surface geometry that we have discussed. So, rough surface gives warm cool and smooth surface give, give cool touch. So, that fabric which is warm if we press through the calendar and then touch it will give cool feeling. So, that is um, due to the surface contact area and another way of releasing heat is a it is a diffusion ok. So, uh, uh, the heat diffusion rate dominates when heat flows from source that is skin to material that is a through the through diff heat diffusion and it is it is depending on the area of contact, density of the material, thermal conductivity of the material, thermal diffusivity of the material and heat capacity. It is a similar to that of Q max transient heat. When skin is in touch with an object different in temperature the steady temperature distribution of the skin get disturbed ok ok and uh, making the thermoreceptor of the skin to develop warm cool touch. So, that is uh, basically uh, this is mainly due to the diffusion of heat ok. So, we have discussed the steady state heat flow and transient heat flow. Now, we will discuss that uh, how to measure this thermal transmission characteristics of clothing. So, it is very important to understand measure the character thermal characteristics thermal transmission transmission characteristics of clothing to evaluate that suitability of a particular fabric ok for a particular application. So, uh, thermal transmission is measured by the one is the insulation value is measured by its thermal resistance. So, if we if we want to know the thermal insulation, so we have to measure the thermal resistance and which is reciprocal to the thermal conductivity. We can either measure the thermal resistance or we can measure the thermal resistance or we can measure the thermal conductivity ok. And thermal conductivity which is watt per Kelvin is measured by measuring the total heat transmitted ok. But total heat transmitted it may be uh, through conduction, convection, radiation through fabric per unit time with unit temperature difference that is the way we can uh, measure. So, we will discuss in detail conductivity is due to both fiber and entrapped air. So, that is it is a combination of fiber and air and uh, fabric thermal conductivity we have uh, we know this uh, with this formula we can measure. And uh, actually measuring the thermal uh, transmission of through a material is a uh, it is a uh, it is very difficult practical difficulty is there. So, measuring air flow is very easy. So, we we can take a uh, channel we can take a pipe and we can measure the quantity of air is flowing any fluid flowing like measurement of water flow through a pipe quantity of water flow it is very easy because we can measure the quantity of uh, water flow per uh, unit time that is ok. But measurement of heat flow is very difficult because the heat uh, flow heat flows in multiple directions. So, controlling heat flow in unidirectionally. So, for a part suppose I have a fabric sample. So, if I want to know the conductivity of the fabric. So, 
through this fabric the heat source is there. So, through heat if we want that heat to be flown through only through this fabric it is very difficult because a source when heat is generated. So, it will it will transmit heat in multiple direction it will okay. So, that only directing the heat through the fabric is very difficult okay, but directing any other fluid air or liquid or any other fluid it is very easy. So, that measurement it is a it is a it has got practical difficulties. So, this complication can be reduced by two methods one is we can compare with the standard known material. So, if we know thermal insulation of any material thermal resistance of any material and if we place our test sample in series then by comparison by using the standard equation standard formula we can calculate the thermal resistance of the unknown fabric unknown sample. So, that is a it is a comparison with the standard sample and this technique is known as the it is used in the TOG meter which is very popular in measurement of thermal resistance of fabric and another is to reduce the heat loss to the other direction. So, if we can direct if we can control the heat loss then we can calculate directly suppose heat source is there this is the heat source. Okay. Now, if we can control the heat flow only through this only through the fabric we can control we can restrict the heat flow in other direction then we can directly measure the heat flow rate per unit area per unit time. So, that these are the two approaches we can measure. So, first approach by using the known sample we can measure the characteristics of unknown sample which is used in a TOG meter and by reducing the loss of heat in other directions and this principle is used in guarded hot plate. So, these two principles we will discuss and along with that we will discuss other uh, techniques. So, this is the standard formula as we know. Now, TOG meter, TOG meter there are two types of TOG meters are there. So, one is uh, called uh, double plate TOG meter, another is single plate TOG meter. So, it is a two plate double plate two plate stand. Uh, so, the method is the standard and test sample have to be placed on in series. So, they have to be placed in series and the internal resistance of the test fabric is calculated by comparing the temperature drop across the test fabric and the standard plate okay, or standard fabric we can whatever we can use, but here we normally use the uh, plate known plate. So, two types of TOG meters are there one is two plate TOG meter another is single plate TOG meter. In two plate TOG meter we use two plates one is the standard plate of known thermal insulation thermal resistance uh, another plate here is that it is a just to uh, one uh, um, uh, insulating plate or just to uh, cover that. So, this is the two plate it is a top plate top plate is uh, used just to uh, actually control any external disturbance okay. in case it is a effect of air temperature is actually eliminated here, but the problem with this two plate uh, top plate is that it has got its own mass and the uh, mass uh, due to its mass the fabric which is compressible in nature get compressed and sometime it gives the it is a wrong result. So, that is a uh, and this and fabrics with uh, different compressibility will give different this uh, thermal resistance value. So, that uh, if we assume the compressibility of the fabrics are same then it is it gives a um, uh, better uh, result, but if the compressibility of the fabrics are different then it gives some wrong result. Okay. 
So, that is a limitation here and uh, here and uh, the advantage is that here the problem of air disturbance is not there and this is the bottom plate which is a standard plate here and with a known thermal resistance value and uh, the our fabric sample fabric specimen with uh, for which we are uh, we want to measure know the thermal resistance here and T 1, T 2, T 3 are the temperature drop the temperature at across the this play this uh, surfaces. So, this T 2 minus T 1 is the temperature drop across the known surface known uh, plate and T 3 minus T 2 is the uh, temperature drop across the fabric specimen. Now, the standard formula is that resistance of the fabric is actually uh, by the temperature difference it is basically it is a constant problem. So, uh, resistance actually the theory is that the resistance if the materials are in series then the resistance of one uh, plate is proportional to the difference in the temperature. Okay. So, that means this is proportional to the, this uh, the resistance of fabric divided by the resistance of the temperature difference across the fabric. So, is constant. So, that means, uh, R, fab, R fabric divided by T 2 minus T 3 is constant equal to R standard divided by T 1 minus T 2. T 1 minus T, sorry, T 2 minus it is it will be T 1 T 2 minus T 1. So, T 1 minus T 2 the temperature difference is there. So, this uh, T 1 minus T 2 is the temperature difference between the bottom plate. Okay. So, that is how um, it works and we can get the thermal resistance value of the fabric by knowing the resistance of the bottom plate knowing the T 1, T 2 and T 3 value. So, this is the principle of two plate tognometer and sample is placed between the heated lower plate and the insulated upper plate. This plate upper plate is insulated plate. The upper plate should be as low as possible, the mass should be as low as possible just to avoid any undue compression. So, these are the temperature at different point and the heater which is important the heater is adjusted the here at the bottom there is a heater arrangement. The heater temperature is adjusted in such a way that the, the temperature T 2 that is the temperature at the upper surface of the bottom plate should be around the skin temperature. So, it should be around 35 degree Celsius and that is uh, how you have to you have to measure the uh, keep the temperature of the heater. Now, coming to the single plate tugmeter. So, single plate tugmeter the, the problem of the compression it is eliminated here. Here we use the single plate here and the temperature in both side other bottom side is the, the higher uh, temperature is T 1 and other side of the surface it is a T 2 and the T 3 which we take it is not at the surface of the fabric which is some distance above the fabric uh, layer that is it is it takes the ambient temperature. So, that means, here the problem is that we have solved one problem by compression uh, of compression, but we have added another complexity here it is a we are this temperature T 2 it is it takes care of the insulation of fabric as well as the air. The air insulation is incorporated here. So, that we have to take care while calculating the insulation of the sample. So, the sample is placed on the heated bottom plate and the top plate is uh, left uncovered. Okay. So, the air above the specimen has the considerable thermal resistance. So, initially in this technique in this uh, method 
we measure the uh, it is called bare plate test. We measure the thermal transmission of thermal resistance without the fabric just to know the thermal resistance of the air. So, it is a bare plate test the air above the specimen has a considerable thermal resistance. So, it is the sum up of the thermal resistance of the uh, fabric. Okay. So, this uh, total it will be air plus fabric. So, temperature T 1, T 2, T 3. So, where T 1 and T 2 are the same as that of the two plate torque meter and T 3 is the temperature of air which is room temperature. So, that T 3 you have to ambient temperature a separate experiment is therefore, performed without the specimen which is called bare plate test to measure the resistance of the air as we have mentioned. In case of base plate it can be calculated the bare plate. So, it can be calculated that R air equal to sim similar way R standard multiplied by T 2 minus T 3 by T 1 minus T 2. So, what is this? This is actually the insulation of air when we are measuring the thermal insulation without any fabric sample. So, thermal resistance of air and this is the standard plate. So, the experiment is again repeated after placing the fabric sample and the apparatus is again allowed to reach to its equilibrium. So, that uh, it is important that we have to allow the experiment uh, up to the equilibrium problem. Initially the temperature will keep on changing. So, after it reaches the equilibrium point that means, the heat flow is st uh, stabilized. So, at after that only we have to measure the take the reading of T 1, T 2, T 3. Okay. So, the thermal resistance of the sample is uh, we can measure. So, this is the thermal resistance of sample, this is the standard and if you will take this value and after that the earlier measured air resistance, resistance of air we have to subtract from that. So, that we can get the total thermal uh, resistance of the sample. Technique here in torque meter it is used as that that the comparing the thermal resistance of the fabric with the standard known sample and these samples are kept in in series. Okay. And next technique as we have mentioned it is a guarded hot plate. Guarded hot plate it is a in this technique we actually control the uh, direct the heat flow direction through the fabric only through the uh, specimen not and we uh, try to stop the heat flow from other direction. So, here in a tog meter another difference is that tog meter it, it measures the heat flow indirectly by comparing the in tog meter we measure the thermal resistance and which with which is indirect in nature which gives an indication, but in guarded hot plate we measure the direct direct heat transmission here we do not measure the heat resistance here we measure the heat transmission the amount of heat amount of heat transmitted through the fabric. So, which is actually reciprocal of heat resist uh, thermal resistance. So, heat transmission is measured which is reciprocal to the thermal resistance and this apparatus there it has got different sub components. First is that it is a test plate, okay. test plate is the plate where the actual heat transmission the actual power drawn uh, by the heat plate is measured and above the heat plate the fabric specimen is placed. So, this is the actual uh, the main uh, the component of the uh, this instrument through which the 
heat is transmitted through the fabric and to restrict the heat flow from the test plate to other direction sideway direction the lateral heat flow is restricted by using the guard plate it is covered with the it is a basically typically it is a square in size shape. So, the guarded ring guard plate is actually placed around the this test plate to restrict the heat flow sideway and another plate which is the bottom plate it is a called lower guard plate which is placed below the test plate. So, and the temperature the all these plates test plate guard plate and the bottom plate their temperatures are kept exactly same. So, between say 33 to 36 degree Celsius. So, at constant temperature is maintained if it is 36 degree Celsius. So, 36 degree Celsius will be maintained for all the plates. So, what does it mean? So, that if we maintain the same temperature that means, there is no temperature gradient. So, heat will not flow to that direction. So, heat will only flow to the direction of lower temperature. So, that is why this total system is placed at a temperature which is lower than that temperature at the standard is you can we can keep around say 4.5 to 20 uh, degree Celsius and uh, around 20 to 80 percent relative humidity. This is the standard atmospheric condition where uh, we want to keep the atmospheric uh, temperature lower than the, uh, the skin temperature. So, that the heat flows through through the uh, that surface through the test plate and heat cannot flow in other direction. So, we will uh, we'll continue with this uh, uh, measurement techniques in the next class till then goodbye uh, thank you.